Hello and welcome to the Mexop demonstration series where you can see live demonstrations for real users and real world applications. For more information about our products or to schedule your own live demonstration, just give us a call or visit us at www.mexop.com. Without further delay, we invite you to sit back and enjoy the demonstration. make duplicate copies. Yeah. So there's a lot of controls in Rhino. Now once you've got the part ready here, we want to go ahead and produce some toolpaths, right? So we'll go into the CAM interface, Rhino CAM, and I'm going to click on Mill. That displays the milling interface. And there's your machining interface loaded in Rhino. You have the machining browser and the machining object. So I have my library of tools loaded. I can add new tools. I can create additional tools if I need to. I can also align my feet and speeds and save all of this to life. So if I tell you I'm using a 5 uh, ball end mill, you can program that into this, right? Absolutely. I can say I want to add a new tool in here and I want to add a 5 8 ball mill. I'll put in 5 8 and we'll figure out what that diameter has to be. 0.625. I'll save this up as a new tool to my library. I now have a 5H tool in here. So the workflow no. here is defining your machining process. Whether you're going to be doing two, three, or four axes. In this case, I'm going to be doing three axes. Yeah. And then the next step is to select your post processor in here, which would be your machine tool that you're going to be working with. I believe you're, you have a Techno machine, is that right? Techno, yeah. Okay, so we have a post for Techno in here. It's a Techno I sell, you pick that, and yeah. then you set the output to NC or NCD, whatever is the preferred extension. If the extension NCD. is not found in the list, you can add it here, right here, by selecting Add New. Is NC the correct ex extension for your machine? NCD. NCD. NCD, so we'll put in dot .NCD. NCD, yeah, that's yep. it. Got it. Sorry about the typo there. All right, okay. so next step is to create our work piece. You go to stock, you do a box stock, you need to copy model box, it computes the minimum stock size that's required based on the part that you put in together. If you click on ignore wireframe, it'll exclude the lines and arcs that we have used for construction in here. It'll exclude that and give us the minimum stock size. And we can put in what you have available on hand. You could say the length, you probably have a 20 inch or you want to go with the same size, you can work with it. You can also change the Z height in here as well. All right. So that would be your work piece you're going to be starting with. So your stock is defined, yep. and right now I just chose to go with the same size that will fit the part. If you need to modify it, you can always do that. Now the next step is you want to establish your alignment and then establish the 000. zero, zero. So if you go to align, align stock, and you can say I want to have the stock aligned to the top and centered in X and Y. Or you can have it aligned to the bottom if you have no material that needs to be removed from the top. And then you pick where you want to put your 000. You click on set wall CS and you pick set stock. Would you want to zero out to the center in X and Y and then the top in the Z? So you pick center in X and Y and higher Z. So it'll basically establish the dead center of the stock in X and Y and you want to put it at the top Z. So that automatically places your origin at the top. So, and so, so hey, you know, I'm, I'm not the best at this, so I, 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 this might be not the smartest question, but what we do today, right, is in our editing software that, that, are, that we, we created, it will tell us what to set the Z height at. And then what we do is we, we, we basically, before we start the mill, we home the, the bit and then we set the height at, the, at whatever the Z height is, the maximum is. The Z height of the uh, work piece. Ah. What's that? Are you setting it to? Are you setting the zero to the top of your spoil board or top of the machine table, or are you setting the zero to the top of your work piece? It, um, the zero is set to the top of the the part I'm entering. Okay, so here we automatically compute that. So if you notice it, uh, we have information on what your uh, part height is. So if you look at it, it says a little over nine inches the maximum height of the part. So we have that information, so we put the zero right at the top. So all you gotta do is when you place this block in here, 
use your hour to the top of it. You bring the tool down, jog it down in the Z, and then you touch off at the top of the workpiece. And in this particular case, we also put the zero to the center in X and Y. Okay, so we would usually put the center, or put it at the center of X, Y, but it, it's towards the bottom. bottom yeah, end. so that would be uh, the southwest corner, which is what typically you know most users uh, tend to do, which would be the yeah. top, then the southwest, which is the uh, lower left corner. That's exactly what we do. Yep, so that's exactly how you do it here. You just go to Align, Set World, Set to Stock, High SZ, and Southwest. That'll place the X, Y, Z zero right there. Okay? Yep. And now we're ready to program uh, your machining operations. You want to start with the roughing process. You could do a roughing and then go to the finishing process. Or if you just want to do a finishing process, you could do a finishing process. Usually we just go one path. One path, okay. So what I'm finishing. going to do here is um, I'm just going to create an outline around this part. As you notice it here, I just produce a mesh outline command. So it creates an outline around this model. And I can pick this outline and program a tool path. Uh, so if you just want to go one path, like rastering back and forth, you could do parallel finishing, where it basically does a planar uh, finishing passes, following the part and going back and forth. You can pick your tool. You said you want to go with the, the 5 8 so I should yep. have, have it right in here added. I can set my feet and speeds. I can also use the built-in calculator in here based on the material you're working with. We can add additional material types as well. Yeah, I'm and using, I, we're machining foam, so. So you can probably go at maybe 12,000 or 18,000 RPM. What RPM do you typically go with, do you know? I think it's 10,000. Okay, so I'll set it to 10,000. And then we'll go uh, 200 inches per minute. That would be the cutting feed rate, but you can slow it down. I can set it to 150. And there's the feed rate. You have your clearance set. You can set the cutting parameters. You can choose to cut either along the length of the piece, going back and forth, which is on the Y. So I would put in 90. Or I can go across along X. And then you, I can set the step. You want to go along the X axis back and forth? Yes. Okay, so that would leave it at zero, and then you can say how fine you want the cut of the step. I could put in a percent of tool diameter, a distance, or a number, or a scallop. I could say percent, fifteen percent, and uh, right in here I would pick generate. So this will produce the tool path. So your tool path is generated. If you save can the parts, can, can you save that and send it to me so I can run it? Uh, absolutely. I would need to seek permission from my supervisor before I could do that, but uh, that's something we can definitely make it available to you. So now we can see that it is following the model. Uh, the tool, what I've defined, is not long enough, so you can see it's cutting some of the stock in here, right? So I can yeah. go back and uh, correct my tool definition. I can put in my tool is about maybe 9 inches in length, save it as the tool, and all i got to do is go back and regenerate the tool pad and go back and run the verification on it. So it's just following that model, rastering it back and forth since it's in parallel passes, as you notice it. And you could always speed up the simulation. If you want to skip to the end, you do a pause and pick simulate to end. It'll run through the simulation. And then display the cut model after simulated. Uh, you can change the step over. Uh, I just chose it to go, as you notice, it, we just went along. Now I can change the uh, step over if I need to. I can have it go in a different pattern. You see that, sir? Yep. Is there any smoothing function? You mean the toolpath? Yeah, like I, yeah, I can see the one edge is yeah. it. Over here, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, the reason is you're cutting in parallel planes, so as it's stepping over, you're seeing this uh, tool motion in here. So if you use a different uh, you know, direction of cut, so you can change the direction of cut. Instead of zero, you can go like a 45. You can use one of the other cut patterns. It'll smoothen it out. Or we could even add another pass in here. Uh, we have a feature called Between Curve Machining which is available in our pro configuration where I can actually uh, just draw two 
preform curves in here. So I'm just going to create like two curve geometries. You see it right there? And I'm going to just make a copy of it and place it right over here. So I now have two curves created in here, as you see it. Uh, did I not make a copy of it? No, I didn't. Okay, so I created a curve geometry right in here. I'm going to hold the Alt key to make a uh, copy of it. Right, so you can see that I got these two curves in here. So what I could do is do a three axis, use a method called between curve machining. And I can go pick the curve right in here and pick the curve right in here. And the tool path with the same cutter, I can have it morph between the two curves. So it's known as between two curve finishing. So it's going to um, morph between the two curves in the cut pattern. So this would actually give you a much finer step over as you notice it. It's morphing between the two curves and following the 3D model. Uh, had you done the same parallel finishing, you could have run a pass with changing the direction of cut. So when you change the direction of cut, it'll basically remove those scallops that you noticed in one cut pattern. Am I making sense here? Yeah, I mean, we can read. Yeah, so, so with the between two curve machining, you can actually pick two curves that are uh, like, you know, similar to each other, and then you can basically program a tool. But now I could have placed this at the start and the end and just use the same pattern. It will follow the curve pattern, but the tool path will be on the 3D model. Now with the parallel finishing, what we did here, uh, we actually processed it so it rasters back and forth. Now, if you want to go back and just machine it, specific area in here, I could even throw in as simple as just a rectangular boundary in here. I could put in a boundary right there, and now I can go back and make a copy of this parallel finishing, and uh, reselect the boundary in here, and I can change my angle of cut, I could put in 90, 45, any angle, any orientation, so that'll go back and give you a cleanup at a much uh, finer finish. So you have precise control of your toolpath. So the parallel finishing that we looked at is offered in all of our configurations starting with standard. If you'd like the ability to be able to do it, some of the advanced 3D finishing methods, then you would have to look at the pro configuration. Any questions? I'm good. So you notice that here it took care of the scalloping. So had I extended the curve boundary further down, you know, clean up this one too. So I can go back in here and I can modify this. I could even have a freeform curve put in here, not just a rectangle. Or I could just uh, grab this curve and I can drop it down in here. And I could even modify these uh, curves so that way uh, I just go and you know, program it within a certain area. So what, I, what I'm what i trying to do is virtually every shape that we edit is going to be similar to this where, you know, there's um, there's a shape with some laterals, there's a seat. And mm -hmm. so I kind of want to define a process of this is how we do it, this is what we do. Yeah, so what you do is you establish a workflow, a process in here, and you just go back and apply the same tool path on each and every one of them. So for example, uh, to keep it simple, I could just do one pass, um, you know, at a 45 degree cut pattern. So that might give you a, you know, nice finish when you have a lot of these areas. Like, uh, you know, a lot of the, uh, where there's a lot of Z variations on the model. You might be able to just do one pattern, like at a 45 degree cut, as you see right here, rather than just doing either along X or along Y, right? Or in yeah. some cases, you may have to do two passes, uh, you know, because of the nature of the geometry. Right. And you can save the entire workflow, what you do here, to a knowledge base, which means when you have similar parts you're working on, you just load the knowledge base. It'll have the information about your your feet and speeds, the tool that's being used, your uh, you know your, your parameters like your step over, your direction of cut, all of them. So you just apply that to 
the data parts. I'm sure you're going to be doing 10 of these parts like similar, but you know, they're all for different shapes and different sizes. Yeah, see, that's where you, I, I don't, you know, I mean, maybe that's how you can help us with this. If I said to you, you know, I ran a part this way and this is what we got, what would you change? You yeah, so, you, you know, basically uh, you change the, the direction of cut, the angle of cut. So here I changed it from zero, just going along zero, to I set it to, you know, a 45. So that way, you know, um, it gives a, you know, a uniform, much more uniform pass uh, because there aren't any, um, you know, vertical planes on the model that are at 45 degrees, right? When you take a look at it, looking down from the top, so they're mostly either at zero or 90, so we can go to an across pattern. For it. All right. Yeah, that might be better. So. In this particular case, that's what I did. I chose to do a 45 degree, as you see it. Okay. And now your toolpaths are ready. Do you want to post process this to the machine? You right click on it and then pick post. And you specify the uh, file name. Automatically, it'll use the name of the part that you got there. And then you pick post. There's your posted output code, which is now ready to be sent to the machine. 